So let's start with uh, a camera. Of course, obviously the type of game we're making will have different uh, types of cameras. So to make our life easier, I'm going to go into my packet manager and I'm going to go on C, even previous packages. Okay, keep in mind that this is, uh, come on. Uh, this is in uh, uh, Unity 0.37, uh, 2008. Let's see. Come on. Yeah, and we want to include Cinema Scene, basically. Uh, let us find it. It's over here. And we're going to install it. Okay, this might take a few seconds, might not. Uh, you might have already added this into your scene. Okay, so now we have cinema scene. Okay, so what this gives us is a few options we have over here. So I'm going to copy the component for this camera, though I don't necessarily care what happens to this view. We're going to make a new one and I'm going to go and create a virtual camera and this will give us this little uh, game object that follows around the camera. So I'm going to paste those component values and I'm going to go and say, uh, I want another camera. So I'm going to go and create another virtual camera and I can place this to maybe another view. Okay, so mm, let's say, let's add something so that we know where we're actually going to. Okay, let's add a cube or whatever. And once you're coming in close to the cube, we can switch onto a view that is going to be looking like this. You can play with uh, the distance, you can play with different... Uh, lenses for this or for example you can maybe close the lens view all that of course depends on what kind of uh, you know on your level design and stuff like that let's make this uh, as navigation static and bake a camera again you'll see why okay so we now need a way that will handle on which camera we're actually which camera should actually be active so when we are disabling or enabling these game objects from Cinema Scene, it will be jumping or it will be moving the camera onto that position. So let's go on and create a new folder, which we're going to call managers. Let's open this up let's create a new script which i'm going to call camera manager now camera manager let's open this up uh, it's going to be a singleton first of all let's zoom in slightly so let's close all this uh, actually so Let's first of all make this singleton so we can access it easily without worrying too much where it is inside our scene. Okay, we're only going to be having one camera. So I'm going to have to create another script which I'm going to call camera hook or cinema scene camera hook. But I don't like to start the scripts with CM because Cinema Scene already uses uh, CM at start, so I don't want to confuse my scripts with uh, Cinema Scene's scripts just from a first glance. Okay, so this on start now is going to be looking, actually, it doesn't necessarily need to go and look onto the camera manager. But what we do want to have is a camera hook for the current camera and on. We want to have a void uh, 
uh, register or assign active camera so we're going to be passing the camera hook new camera and then if current camera is not null we're going to be closing the camera and then we're going to be assigning the new camera and let's create a few methods for here so first of all I would like to have public void enable camera and a public void for disable camera because these are hooks uh, we can have a public game object for us to be able to know which uh, object actually is for us so this can be the cinema scene object okay and we can use triggers now to know when we are enabling or disabling this object so enable camera set active true set active false and then void on trigger render okay or like either other and we can do a check now if other dot actually let's do uh, player states manager player states other get component in parent player states manager if player states not equals null okay then you should do something we can also say public bool uh, on exit follow back or on exit enable camera or enable hmm, okay so let's do a public camera hook on exit enable hook okay so this will be now your player states and on trigger render we most likely going to want to find and assign the camera manager dot enable uh, or uh, come on assign active camera as this and then on trigger exit same thing if but instead of assign active camera this i'm going to assign on exit enable hook but if on exit enable hook is null then do nothing we don't really need to do anything over there okay so cm object dot start will always start as false and we might have a bool that say public bool on start assign that's for basically initialization so if on start assign then just consider this being the active camera where you start your game with okay so let's save this okay so let's minimize this and now we have the two cameras the first camera is going to be well, let's close all of this we don't really care for that it's going to be our main camera and our starting camera and actually no uh, yeah for this one because it doesn't really need to have a, a trigger because it's going to be the starting camera we can just assign this and we can drop the, the game object which is in this case for the first camera it's going to be this game object okay you're never going to be having a trigger so that means you're never going to escape this camera but for the second camera we're actually going to need uh, a trigger collider so that we know when we can enable it so I'm going to add a box collider I'm going to add it down here and it will be best if we unparent this however and reset the rotation okay so we're going to make something like this it's just going to be a trigger so it doesn't really matter and 
I'm going to make this a trigger. This is going to be a camera hook. The camera cinema scene object for this is going to be this one. And on exit, enable hook is of course going to be bringing back your first camera. Okay, so let's make uh, some game objects that will handle this. So let's call this camera two objects. I'm going to call this trigger and we already have the camera and just going to parent them below. Okay, I'm going to close this camera. We still have the first camera on a sign. And for us, if we want to go over there and actually trigger the collider, we're going to need to have a collider. Okay, so we're going to add a capsule collider onto this. Because we are using the Navis agent, this doesn't necessarily need to be this size. Okay, it can be even even this. But because this is a moving collider, we need to have a rigid body and because we don't want to fall through the ground, it needs to be a rigid body. Okay, so now we have our collider, we have a character, we have our collider, we have our trigger for switching to the second camera and so on. So let's hit play. And let's see, we do have an issue, I guess. The issue is that we forgot to assign a camera manager. Okay, so let's add that. Camera manager, and then... Technically, you can just skip having the camera manager entirely, but we can do other things later that will help us with this. So it shouldn't matter. Okay, so let's start. Let's go over there. And we will see that uh, that nothing's going to happen because let's see. Let's get a little bit closer. Our capsule and this trigger. Yeah, maybe we need to be a little bit like this. Okay, so we're missing something. So let's look into the code. Yeah, we're never actually running enable or disable camera. That's what we're missing. So if camera ca uh, current camera is not null, current camera dot disable camera, and then current camera dot enable camera. And there we go. So now it should work perfectly. Let's move this a little bit to the side. So we have better view. So we're uh, sure that we're hitting it. So let's get there. And true enough, though, you see that it did a little bit of a small jump. Uh, well, it does lerp, which it might be something you might want to have into your game. Okay, that's entirely up to your director. But let's say we want to control which uh, which cameras will actually do this jump and which cameras will actually just clamp into position like they do in Resident Evil. The trick for that is the default blend we see over here. If I switch this to cut, and you know what, let's bring this this back slightly so that we can see it a little bit better. Okay, and there we go. There is a jump. And I think we Yeah, for whatever reason we can't oh yeah we can't go in there because we have the nav mess we need to rebake it okay so uh, so basically that works but let's say we want to to actually add it so 
the simplest way to find this will just be to open up the cinema scene brain look for default blend which is this and we have our cinema scene blend definition then let's go on to our camera hook paste this in here we're going to get some uh, red lines basically we just need the namespace and we have the enter on enter blend definition and then we can have actually because this is the on enter i think most likely on enter should just do the trick so assign active camera we now need a reference to the cinema scene brain and assign active camera before you disable the camera we're going to go and say on your cinema scene brain dot default blend will be new camera dot on enter blend definition okay save that now don't forget that oops what are we missing i forgot to save the camera hook save it then So, camera manager, let's just drop the cinema scene brain and now let's go and set them up. So, I'm going to set that on Ender Blend Definition will be on this camera, on the first camera, will be the is in, is out for about one second. And on this camera, I'm going to say just do um, this is the trigger. Yeah, just do a cut as it is basically so when going in it's going to work on to actually you know what it's not going to work as an is in is out because we do not no okay yeah we do assign it okay yeah no we do assign the camera so it's going to work exactly as we want to so perfectly So going in, it's a cut, going out, it's as in, is in, is out. Of course, this can be used in other types of games as well, which we're going to see in the future. So that's how we can handle the camera. Of course, if you have pre-rendered and pre-rendered backgrounds, uh, it kind of changes the whole deal about that but it's a starting point especially for if you want to do a 3d one a 3d scene then this will get you started uh, really fast so let's finish this part and on the next one we're going to continue creating our objects and our game so we can see a lot more tricks and stuff like that as always you know what to do like subscribe and if you like to see more stuff like this of course consider supporting your pattern so we can keep making a lot more of these i'll see you next time